Hey everybody, it's your boy B here. This is not an official Temptology video, rather this is a public service announcement. I kind of just wanted to hurry up and get a video out there um, with some important information for my friends and family to give them the best chance of staying healthy during this pandemic. Hopefully you share it with people I don't know too, uh, especially the elderly and the immunocompromised, because they can definitely benefit from this information also. Because I'm hearing a lot about washing your hands, which is good, and disinfecting surfaces, which is really good. And of course, then there's the whole toilet paper rush or Charmageddon, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I'm not seeing much about how to keep your immune system in tip-top shape, which seems like an important detail. By now, I'm sure you've heard about how the elderly and immunocompromised are more at risk for contracting COVID-19. This is definitely true, but I think it's also important to point out that many seemingly healthy people are borderline immunocompromised themselves due to how terribly they're taking care of their immune system. Everybody thinks they're healthy, and most of us aren't. So <laughs> I thought it'd be a good idea to share with you guys things you can do to keep your immune system up to par. These are things you should definitely be doing every day, but at least during a pandemic. You know what I'm saying? Because this protocol can help the immune system keep viruses, bacteria, and even cancer at bay. It can even help the body control the virus if you've already got it, and it might even mean life or death for the elderly and the immunocompromised, depending on their situation. So please share this with them most urgently. Okay, so there are so many things that affect the competency of the immune system, you wouldn't even believe it. Genetics, age, gender, smoking habits, how often you exercise, alcohol consumption, what stage you're at in your menstrual cycle even, your medical history, your diet, even early life experiences. It's crazy. And that's a big ass list. But in case you didn't notice, a lot of those things you can't control. The good news is, you can control some of them, and those are going to be the lifestyle factor ones, like diet, exercise, and sleep. And, well, I guess obviously avoiding unhealthy things like stress and cigarettes and too much alcohol. Okay, well, I guess and heroin and meth, too, and your filthy ex-lover. Some of you may not be remotely interested in the technical details of my recommendations, and it's cool. I totally understand. So I summed up this entire video into one paragraph, and then if you're interested in learning a little bit more about my conclusions, stay tuned. I do encourage everybody to doubt what I'm saying, though, and look into the studies for themselves. So I'm going to cite the sources below for super geeks like me. And then, of course, you're also welcome to just take my word for it and do what you can to nail this protocol. It's up to you, though. Sleep at least seven hours a night. Make sure to get your vitamins A, C, D, E, B6, and folic acid, as well as your minerals zinc, selenium, iron, and copper. Ingest yogurt, kombucha, or something with probiotics in it at least a few times a week. Get out in the sun, supplement, or seek a food source of vitamin D. Make sure to get your vitamin D in. And then be active, of course. Exercise at least three times a week. And then mitigate stress however you possibly can. I realize that this is easier said than done and might not be controllable for a lot of people, but I think you just need to know that stress is way more harmful than you might have been told that it is. We'll go into that later if you want to keep watching. This could be meditation or listening to your favorite music, vape some chronic, whatever it takes to de-stress. As long as it doesn't involve hard drugs or binge drinking, do it. And that's it. It's that simple. Actually, I could simplify it even further by saying, get enough sleep and exercise, eat a diverse diet with lots of colors of vegetables and fruits, as well as nuts and seeds, and then meditate. How about that? Not too shabby. The problem I have sometimes with simplifying things too much though, is that simply saying, do this or don't do that, isn't really convincing for some people that it's worth the effort to step up and take better care of themselves. For that reason, I present version two. Sleep. It may be hard to sleep, wondering how you're going to pay your bills or with your kids home from school screaming in the morning, but it's imperative that you and your family make quality sleep a high priority. Find a way. And if you suffer from any kind of sleep disorder, it's definitely time to address that with your doctor too. Especially if you're one of those people who've just been kind of powering through lack of sleep for all these years. 
I mean, just this one thing alone can leave you immune compromised. So here's why it matters. Sleep and the immune system are closely interconnected in that sleep affects both the innate and the adaptive arm of our body's defense system. Studies show that sleep loss enhances the inflammatory pathways in our body and can reduce the functional capacity of our leukocytes and other white blood cells. Lack of sleep can also reduce the cytotoxicity of our neutrophils, another white blood cell, even after just one night of sleep deprivation, essentially making their firepower against viruses, well, less powerful. Now, hopefully we'll see a vaccine for this soon, and if you want it to work like it's supposed to, definitely get a good night's rest. Because several vaccination studies in humans have shown that getting a good night's sleep after your vaccination doubles the antigen-specific immune response. Doubles it. It's pretty impressive. It's kind of like how memory formation in the brain happens while you sleep. Well, as above, so below. Turns out that immunological memory, or antigen-specific memory in this case, works the same way. So the vaccine teaches the immune system what to target, and if you get enough sleep after your vaccination, it's more likely to actually remember and recognize that target. Sweet dreams. I say as I'm literally drinking a cup of coffee. <laughs> if our population was better educated in nutrition, I think we would see way more empty vegetable, fruit, and supplement aisles than toilet paper aisles. That's because there's ample evidence that vitamins A, C, E, D, B6, folic acid, and the minerals iron, copper, zinc, and selenium all modulate the immune system for the better, or for the worse, if you're deficient. Believe it or not, even in 2020, about 90% of Americans are deficient in at least one of the vitamins and minerals I mentioned. And that could be your ass in a pandemic like this. Of course, as a nutritionist, I always advocate for whole food sources. In nutrition science, for all that we do know, there's even more that we don't know about the amazing benefits of all these fruits and vegetables. But when it comes to simply avoiding a deficiency, a good multivitamin can do just fine and fill in the gaps. No need to overdo it, just make sure, make absolutely sure you're not deficient in one of those vitamins and minerals that I mentioned. So for whole food sources, what would these vitamins and minerals look like in the real world on your plate? People don't talk about that very often. Here's what you wanna focus on. The orange and starchy vegetables like sweet potatoes and butternut squash are great for your vitamin A betas, beta carotene, alpha carotene, beta cryptoxanthin, all great stuff. Citrus fruits, peppers, or cruciferous vegetables, you know, the farty ones like broccoli and cauliflower and Brussels sprouts, for your vitamin C. And for your vitamin E, you're gonna need some sunflower seeds, almonds, or just cook with grapeseed oil for a bit. Brazil nuts are amazing. You can find them at any Kroger or Meyer or other supermarket. They're gonna take care of most of your immunospecific minerals that I mentioned. Half cup a day gives you hundreds of percents of selenium and almost 100% daily value of copper. You'll need to seek out another source for your iron, zinc, B6, and folic acid though, which could be a cup of chickpeas, or if you're a meat eater, red meat. Although I don't recommend this for many reasons, colon cancer risk being the main one. It's okay for now, we're just trying to make it through this thing uninfected. Okay, going further into detail of what this actually could look like. It could just be a sweet potato or my favorite butternut squash, cubed, with a red pepper, julienne, and then saute both of those things together in grapeseed oil, and then have a side of chickpeas or a side of steak for that meal. Throughout the day, just snack on nuts and seeds, especially Brazil nuts, and bam, that's it. That's literally all the vitamins and minerals that I mentioned. It's not that intimidating, is it? Of course, don't forget to stay out of your own immune system's way and avoid complete bullshit like pastries and sugary drinks. Free sugars and empty carbs just distract the immune system while it's trying to do its magic. Another mega important vitamin for healthy immune function is vitamin D. From food or from sunshine. So make sure to get a daily dose or at least a quality dose a few times a week. Because it is fat soluble, which means that our bodies are going to store any extra instead of excreting them out like it does with vitamin B and C. And it's actually pretty cool how our bodies make it from the sun. The sun hits our skin, interacts with cholesterol, and forms vitamin D3. Or cold calciferol, is what it's called. And then from there, vitamin D3 actually modulates the innate and the adaptive arm of our immune system. It's like the final boss form of vitamin D. Deficiency in vitamin D is associated with autoimmunity and increased susceptibility to infections. So, pretty serious stuff. And all you have to do is go outside if it's sunny and have a walk. Or if you do dairy, just make sure you get the vitamin D in rich kind, or get a supplement. Done.
a deficiency in even one of these vitamins or minerals I mentioned above can negatively impact the immune system, even a mild deficiency. And one last thing about nutrition. A recent study demonstrated how probiotics activate innate immunity to prime the adaptive arm of our immune system. There's countless strains of probiotics, guys. I mean, billions, literally. But your whole food sources are going to be things like yogurt, kefir, kombucha, kimchi. And if you want a massively wide assortment, you're going to need a supplement. But most common foods like yogurt have the popular probiotics like acidophilus and streptococcus, and they'll do the job just fine. The takeaway here should be that eating vegetables of many colors, as well as nuts and seeds, probiotics like yogurt, chickpeas, some meats, and getting outside and getting some sunshine should cover your immune system from any vitamin or mineral deficiency. It's not that hard. Evidence from epidemiological studies shows that leading a physically active lifestyle can actually reduce the incidence of both communicable and non-communicable diseases. Why is that? Well, exercise is a potent stimulus of the immune response, including our response to vaccinations. And it's also shown that it can even delay or limit the age-associated decline in our immune competency, keeping it stronger for longer. I think there's a joke there somewhere. Even a single exercise bout can be beneficial. And of course, regular exercise has a bigger benefit because molecular and cellular processes begin within seconds to minutes of the first rep following a period of exercise or physical activity. Typically, you actually can exercise moderately with mild upper respiratory tract symptoms, but I would definitely recommend seeing a doctor and not exercising if you're experiencing any of these symptoms, which are actually pretty common with COVID-19. Typically, recovery from respiratory viral infections takes about two to three weeks, which correlates with the time it takes your immune system to generate the cytotoxic T cells to clear the virus. After that time, when the symptoms are gone, it's safe to work out again, but you might wanna take it a little bit slow. Because about three weeks is a really long time to go without physical activity or exercise, but if your symptoms are mild enough, a light workout can benefit you. So like I mentioned earlier in my abridged version, Stress is more important and is a way bigger deal than most people realize. There's really not a lot of public education on this. Probably because to eliminate stress, we would have to completely transform our work culture and really address some things about society. It's kind of a pipe dream anyway, eliminating stress. That's why I'm not recommending you try. I'm recommending that you learn how to manage your stress. I mean, stress is inevitable, you know? What it actually is, it's a complex response to external stimuli it involves our brain and its connection to our central nervous system, which connects to our endocrine system, and of course, our immune system. From there, it affects virtually every single organ. The stress leads to high blood pressure, which can damage your vessels and, at worst, cause a stroke. It can also damage the heart. Not to mention, the cortisol that's residual in your bloodstream long after the stress ended can lead to a host of issues in itself, like irritable bowel syndrome or, especially, Immune suppression. One of the more interesting immune cells, in my opinion, is the natural killer cell. It non-specifically kills tumor cells and virally infected cells. Of the myriad of immune cells, the majority of them actually work together to get a specific job done. One very specific job, but not natural killer cells. It's non-specific, so whether it comes across a tumor or a virus or any other pathogen, it will destroy it. Once activated, natural killer cells eliminate their target through the release of cytotoxic enzymes or soluble factors, basically toxic sludge. The natural killer cell first approaches the virus, injects it with sludge, and then engulfs it. So badass. Stress actually makes the natural killer cell weaker and therefore less able to do its job. It does this by lowering the cytotoxicity or the potency of the sludge it injects into the virus. That's why it's now accepted that high-stress personalities are actually more cancer-prone. And that means more virus-prone as well. I mean, bullshit's gonna happen, guys. It's part of life, and you can't always control it. How you react to the bullshit, however, is 100% in your control. So, making time for stress reduction should be a high priority. Here's a couple suggestions. If you want to be time efficient, you can knock two things off of this list at the same time by using exercise for stress management. It's great at it you'll lower the actual chemicals involved in the stress response. You'll oxygenate your body and your brain. You'll get stronger. And if you're pushing yourself hard enough, you'll even get a free dose of dopamine and endorphins. Then if you can't get away from your kids long enough to exercise, use them for your workout. I'm not kidding. 
no pun intended. Kids up to eight years old are typically light enough for even a beginner to hold and do some squats. Or you can chase them around the yard or the street vigorously for two minutes at a time for a total of 30 minutes. There's your high intensity hit workout. Or you can lay on the ground and bench press or leg press them. If they're young enough, they'll think you just suddenly became more fun to hang out with. And if they're old enough to think it's a lame idea, then they're old enough to go to their room while you get your workout in. Just saying. Another well-studied option is meditation. It was actually only back in the 90s that meditation and relaxation research in the mindfulness-based stress reduction paradigm began to gain traction in the medical community. Meditation can mean a slew of things, but for the most part, it all involves finding a nice, quiet, dedicated place to sit and non-judgmentally observe your thoughts as they flow by. It can mean completely quieting your mind, or it can be more active. Either way, it's completely wonderfully relaxing, and it can bring your heart rate, blood pressure, and cortisol levels down. But there's actually a more specific form of meditation that I think you'll be surprised actually has clinical data to back it up, and that is the practice of guided imagery. Guided imagery is visualizing or playing a movie in the mind's eye of the healing process actually happening. Viewing pictures of natural killer cells or tumor cells or basically seeing live animations of the immune system overtaking a pathogen allows you to visualize with some degree of realism the immune system doing its work. And while certainly more studies are definitely needed, it actually helps. There were studies done on this in the 1980s and the results were outstandingly positive with a double remission and higher survival rates among the participants. Unfortunately, the research wasn't exactly well designed and there were conflicts of interest and even some hypothesis on the power of simply expecting a positive outcome having a greater effect than the imagery itself. Placebo or not, it was encouraging enough to attract more funding for future studies. So ultimately, we're gonna find out whether it's the specific guided imagery or if it's placebo that's doing the magic. In the meantime, who gives a shit? It works and has no side effects. Those in need of psychological help in addressing PTSD or eating disorders, past or stubborn hurtful experiences, or personality disorders, should definitely prioritize addressing it. Because it's stress too. And I really think if people understood the extent of stress's effect on our physiology, they would definitely devote more resources to resolving their issues and finding their passion in life. Hopefully this helps you a little bit. Imagine everybody doing that. God, the whole world would be less stressed out, wouldn't it? Shoo wee. On the topic of immune boosters, this video pretty much covered most of them. I'm really talking about products specifically marketed as immune boosting. Mostly, it's not really that true. There really aren't many immune boosters, other than echinacea and elderberry, that have significant antiviral effects on the body as it relates to the immune system. For common colds and some viruses, they actually do offer a clinically proven boost for the immune system, but in the case of COVID-19 or any of the coronavirus strains, do not use these herbs. From what we can tell, the function that elderberry provides is already heightened in our bodies during a coronavirus infection and can overstimulate the immune response. It could lead to long-term lung damage and fibrosis, causing functional disability and reducing your quality of life. Hopefully this will be studied so we'll find out for sure, but maybe in the meantime, just hold off on that. Besides, if you're actually nailing all the recommendations in this video, consider your immune system boosted. The way society is set up currently is very dangerous when it comes to stress and some other things outside the scope of this video. <laughs> the interconnectedness of mind, body, lifestyle, diet, longevity, and quality of life deserves a much greater emphasis from our medical and general communities. So now at least you know the importance of paying attention to all this crap, if nothing else. Just tap into our pre-industrialized DNA. Think about what we evolved with for millennia. That's what our bodies want. Maybe in 50,000 years or something, we can evolve the machinery to sit on our asses for 12 hours a day or eat junk food with no health consequences, but for now, we are still active omnivores, like it or not. So that means we require activity, a diverse diet of non-processed foods, and restorative rest to do it all again the next day. Let's start acting like it. Know what I'm saying? All right, Braden Firebrand signing out. Stay healthy, friends, and much love.